Mark in Green Bay, Wisconsin, home of the Packers. Now, you know I'm not a sports fan, <laughs> but I've heard of them anyway. Okay. Uh, hi, Paul. I've watched with great interest your building of Music Room 2, which is what we're in right now. Um, from the teardown to the rough construction to the IRS and now to the FR 30s, I've watched all of it. I've noticed in your most recent video that there are now numerous treatments behind the speakers, sidewalls, and ceilings. How about giving us a tour of the room and explaining how you determine what products to put where? Okay, sure. We get a lot of questions like that, and at some point I'm going to pull the... I'm going to do it really badly, too. I'm going to pull the camera <laughs> and just let you see the other way, because we rarely ever let you see the other way. So the room is... 16 wide by 25 feet long. At each of the corners, there's a 45 degree angle that you can see over here. And it, in this side, kind of makes a bit of a horn. On this side, it just sort of breaks up some of the waves on that. And what do we have in here? Well, every system that we have had of which there's only been two, the IRS and the FR30, we have had a little bit different types of room correction that we've added. So you'll notice here, these DAAD, they're out of Italy, they're called DAAD, and they're, they're, they're more absorber than diffuser, but each side of these has a marking on it that shows you whether it's an absorber or a diffuser. And these are set up as diffusers. And you'll notice that they are pretty much right in line with the side reach of the tweeter from the FR30. Now, that takes care of what we call the point of first reflection. And those were just done by hand, moving them, listening, moving them, listening to where it just made the sound stage very wide because we don't want the tweeter to go over here, hit the wall, bounce back to the person out of time. And the FR30, which is a monopole speaker, meaning that the sound mostly comes just out of one uh, uh, end of it, the front, um, has uh, reflections on the side. I mean, sound comes out here, not reflection, but sound comes out here, hits the wall, and mucks up the way the sound is presented because when it finally comes over here, when it's reflected off this wall and it comes back to the listener, it's out of time. Now we didn't do that with the IRS because the IRS doesn't have those sidewall interaction problems. So the IRS is a dipole and dipoles have sound coming in phase out the front and out of phase out the back. And when the two come around and meet at the sidewalls, they cancel each other. But monopoles, which is 99.9% .9 of all the speakers out there, um, they just create this envelope of sound that hits the wall. So you wanna have some sidewall diffusion, which we did. And we have these Vicoustic, V-I-C-O-U-S-T-I-C, um, they're abfusers. It's really, it's, this is just a piece of plastic and behind it is foam rubber. These seem to help a lot. We have them on the ceiling, as you'll notice. Let, let me, here, I'm gonna do, every cinema photographer in the world is gonna go, ah! but here we go. Hang on, don't get, don't get nauseous. Woo! Oh, what was that? Oh, that was the, uh, I'm gonna bring it all the way over here. Okay, and we're gonna set it so you can see. There we are. That's the back of the room. Now you'll notice all the way back over here. And just so you know, this mess right here is not normal because of a number of reasons that we've talked about before and we'll talk about more. We've been mixing octave records here on the FR30s. They are the most incredible mixing monitoring systems I've ever experienced. So until the new studio is finished, we just brought all the mixing board and all this up here. And that's why you see this mess. I, the next time I do this round of videos, 
I think those will be gone. So those are the three seats. Back here are the same DAAD um, abfusers, and they are, again, set up as diffusers. We have them in back here and here. This computer setup, um, it's for engineering. So we do engineering stuff with that, and just sort of here. Then you have the equipment rack. And one of the things he asked me is, how do we make decisions about what gets placed where? Well, my preference is to always have the electronics for the sources and control off to the side, away from the speakers like we have here, and then run long interconnects all the way back to the amplifiers, which you saw before. And so back there is the power plant, the amplifiers for the speakers connected by long balanced interconnects, which, which are important. So uh, what else can I tell you about this system? Uh, as opposed to the power amps being over here, or as opposed to how we do it at a show, when you see us at a show, we have this whole mess is between the speakers. Now we do that because shows are always a compromise. Shows are there for people to look and drool over our equipment, we hope. Um, so when you're sitting there listening, we want you to be looking at our equipment and our speakers, and so that's why we do that. It's not the best setup. The best setup is what we have here. Um, we have the VPI, and uh, what is it, the 10th? 40th, 40th anniversary direct drive turntable. Um, I, I, it's a, um, I don't remember the name of the cartridge, but it's expensive. <laughs> and we have, uh, this, this is a customer's unit here. This is um, a, a PST, uh, a DMP that we keep on hand. The preamp, power plant, an Inuos server that we use for streaming and uh, one of our old power bases down here, and then of course the direct stream DAC and the BHK preamp. So that's pretty much the tour of Music Room 2. And as soon as we start opening up for tours, once again, I do hope you will have a chance to come up and experience what I think you're gonna find is some of the best sounding equipment ever, okay? Thanks, I appreciate you watching. Thank you.